Hello. Before moving forward, let's look at one more question. A mass M1, when pulled by a force of 10 Newton, experiences an acceleration of 5 meters per second square. When a mass M2 is acted upon by a force of 5 Newton, it experiences an acceleration of 4 meter per second square. We have been asked to calculate the acceleration of both the masses combined together when acted by a force of 20 Newtons. So, the concepts we learned earlier, we will apply uh, those concepts in this question. Initially, we have been asked to find the mass of M1 and mass M2. So, how we'll do that? We will do it like this. Force we have been given is equal to 10 Newton and acceleration we have been given is equal to 5 meter per second square. Force is equals to mass into acceleration. This implies mass equals to force upon area. Therefore, mass M1 is force F1 upon acceleration A1 that is uh, 10 newtons upon 5 meter per second square which is equals to 2 kg. Similarly, mass M2 is F2 upon A2 which is equal to 5 newton upon 4 meter per second square which is 1.25 kgs. Now, we have been asked to calculate the acceleration when both of these masses are combined. Therefore, total mass now will be total mass will be M1 plus M2 that is 3.25 kg. Now, when a force of 20 Newton acts on it, the acceleration will be force upon mass which is 20 Newtons upon 3.25 kg which is equal to 6.15 meters per second square. Now let's move forward to third law of motion. The third law of motion states that when an, one object exerts a force on another object, the second object instantaneously exert, exerts a force back on the first object. These two forces are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. These forces act on different objects and never on the same objects. The two opposing forces are also known as action and reaction forces. To summarize all these points, the third law of motion says, to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Well, we have to be very careful when saying this statement. It must be remembered that action and reaction always act on two different objects. Now let's look at an activity to better understand third law of motion. What you have to do in this activity is, you have to stand on roller skates and ask your friend to throw a basketball at you. What you will notice that as soon as you catch the ball, you will start moving. This happens because the force you apply to stop the basketball is applied on you by third law of motion. And due to this force, the roller skate starts to move. You have to take precautions while doing this experiment. Do wear helmets and other safety equipments. Now let's move on to conservation of momentum which is the final topic in this chapter. Consider two balls as shown below. Initially, ball A is moving with velocity ua towards ball B with, which is moving with velocity ub. Mass of ball A is ma and mass of ball B is mb. Consider ua to be greater than ub so that the collision occurs between the two balls. Now during the collision what happens is as soon as A strikes B, there is a force which is applied by A on B equal to FAB. So, uh, and by third law of motion, there is an equal yet opposite force which is acted ob on A by B which is equal to FBA. And finally, what happens is the ball A starts moving with velocity VA and ball B moves with velocity VB. Now let us look at second law of motion. From second law of motion, we have FAB equal to change in momentum of ball A upon time, which is MA, VA minus UA upon time T. Similarly, 
force FBA is change in momentum of ball B upon time, where this time is the duration for which the collision occurs. Now if we look at the third law of motion, we have force FB equals to minus force BA because these forces are equal and opposite in direction. So we equate these two terms FAB and FBA to obtain the equation MAUA plus MBUB equals to MAVA plus MBVB. This means the initial momentum is equal to the final momentum of the system. Hence, momentum of a system is conserved if no external force acts on the system. Now, the important point here is, we have to choose a system such that there is no external force acting on it. To better understand this concept, let's look at a question. Suppose a girl of mass 40 kgs jumps with a horizontal velocity of 5 meters per second onto a stationary cart with frictionless wheels. The mass of the cart is 3 kg. What is our velocity as the cart starts moving? We have to assume that there is no external unbalanced force working in the horizontal direction. So we have this girl with, whose weight is 40 kgs and we have a cart which we, whose weight is 3 kgs. The girl jumps onto the cart with a velocity of 5 meters per second in let's say right direction. So the initial momentum of girl is 40 into 5 and the cart is 0 because it has no velocity initially. Now finally what happens is the cart and the girl becomes a single system. So the total mass of it will be 40 plus 3 kg and let's say the velocity becomes v. Equating this we get 45 is equal to 43v which implies v equals to 45 upon 43 meters per second. This means when the girl jumps on the cart its final velocity will be 45 upon 43 meters per second. Now the important point here to understand is suppose we would have considered the girl to be our only system. In that case what happens is, when we apply law of conservation of momentum on curl, we won't be able to get the correct answer. Why so? Because there is a force acting on the curl in this direction by the card. Now, this is an external force on the curl. Similarly, when the girl jumps on the card, there is a force in this direction on the card, which is an external force on the card if only card is considered to be our system. Now if we consider both of the girl and the car to be our system, these two forces cancel each other and hence there is no external force acting on our system. And hence, considering girl and the car to be our whole system, we can apply law of conservation of momentum. With this, we can see how important it is for us to choose a system such that there is no external force acting on it. Before ending this chapter, let us consider one last example. A bullet of mass 20 grams is horizontally fired with a velocity of 150 meters per second from a pistol of mass 2 kg. What is the required velocity of pistol? So let's say this is our pistol and this is the bullet that is that has been fired. So this bullet goes with a velocity of 150 meters per second, has a mass of 20 grams and the gun has a mass of 2 kgs. We have been asked to calculate the recoil velocity V of the gun. Now in case of velocities it is always advised that you mark up direction of positive whichever is suitable for you. So for example I mark the right direction to be positive. Now I will apply law of conservation of momentum to find the velocity V as there is no external force acting on this system. So initially, the, the momentum of the system is zero as there is no velocity for bullet as well as the gun. Now, as soon as the gun is fired, mass 20 into 1 upon 1000 for converting into it into kgs into 150 
this is the momentum of the bullet plus velocity v into 2 the momentum of the gun now we equate this what we get is 2v equals to minus 20 into 150 upon 1000 so this equals to 3 which implies velocity v is equals to minus 3 by 2 meters per second so what does this negative sign signifies this negative sign signifies that velocity is in direction of opposite to which the bullet was fired that is the left direction because I considered my right direction to be the positive direction we can also see that the velocity of recoil is very less compared to velocity of bullet which has been fired with this we conclude this chapter on force and laws of motion thank you